What's up guys, John Rettinger here. There's been a lot of confusion over the iPhone 3GS pricing and a lot of outcry over the upgrade policy. So I'm going to try and break it down for you, explain why AT&T and Apple are doing this, and possibly give some suggestions as to what you can do about it. So before we get started, it's important you understand what the term subsidy means. And most of you probably know, but if you don't, subsidy is an economic incentive for a purchase. So what that means in terms of AT&T, is if you buy a phone, any phone, let's say not even the iPhone, for, for free. You sign a new contract and you get a free phone. Certainly that phone that you just got has value to it. It's not zero. There's R&D, hardware costs, but you're paying zero. What AT&T and most other carriers are doing is they're taking a loss on the price of that phone. They bought it from the carrier, but they're knowing that they're gonna make that loss up over the term of your contract. So essentially what they're doing is giving you an incentive to sign a new two-year contract. So when the first iPhone launched, it was subsidy free, meaning AT&T wasn't taking any of the cut off it. That's why when the iPhone first launched, it was 599, 600 bucks was a lot of money. The price dropped a little bit later, but even then it was still an unsubsidized price. When the iPhone 3G launched, AT&T was able to subsidize it and take a little bit of a loss because they hadn't for the previous generation of phones. So anyone who had an iPhone, AT&T didn't lose any money by giving you a discount on that phone. That's one of the reasons it was so expensive. So when they transitioned to the 3G, they could afford to give you a discount in anticipation of having everyone who bought a 3G have a two-year contract. Now, if you're following me, this is where things get a little bit tricky with the iPhone 3GS. Since AT&T gave everyone an incentive and a subsidy to purchase the iPhone 3G, they can't give another subsidy for the iPhone 3GS. Well, physically, they could, but it would be a huge economic hit. They would lose millions and millions and millions of dollars by giving another subsidy. So essentially what they would be doing is taking a loss on one phone and taking a loss on a second phone, and those two losses would not be recouped on the term of a contract. So having the iPhone in their stable would actually be a losing proposition for them. That's the big reason why AT&T didn't offer a subsidy or is not offering a subsidy for current 3G owners and those already on a contract. Think about it like this. Let's take the iPhone out of the equation. Let's say six months ago, you went to AT&T and you got a new phone, you signed a new contract, and you've been really happy with it. Six months later, you want to get a new phone. You probably don't expect AT&T to give you another discount on a new phone six months later because they haven't recouped the cost of the discount they gave you on the first phone. And the same thing is applying to the iPhone 3GS. So let's get into the pricing of the 3GS for just a minute here. It's going to run you $199 if you're eligible for an upgrade for the 16 gigabyte version or $299 if you're eligible for the 32 gigabyte version. If you're a current 3G owner or you're already on contract, the 16 gig is gonna run you 499 or the 32 is gonna run you 599. For those of you keeping track at home, there's a $300 price difference. So AT&T is subsidizing the price of your phone by $300. So there is something kind of interesting that you can do. And I'm not recommending that you do this because there could be some little squirrely things that happen, but let me explain and at least give you guys some options. AT&T and all other carriers have what's called an early termination fee. So what that essentially means is you can terminate your contract, and so you lose your phone number, and you can start a new contract. It means you're also eligible for a new line of service. So before I go through and do the math about this, let me tell you, I know a lot of people are talking about early termination fees. I don't recommend doing this. There's a time lapse in between terminating your phone and getting a new line of service that may not make you eligible to even open a new line. You may have to do it under a different name or have a parent open it for you. It can be very, very, very difficult, not to mention the fact that you're going to lose your phone. But there is a lot of discussion over the early termination policy, so I'm going to explain it to you. Essentially, what the early termination policy for AT&T is, it's $175 at the start of a contract. So you sign a contract today, you have 30 days to make up your mind. At 31 days, if you want to cancel your contract, you have to pay $175. What they'll do is, I'm sorry, yeah, $175. What they'll do is every month after that, they'll take $5 off the cost of early termination fee. So over a 24-month period, you can essentially take off $120. 
over the early termination fee, so it would be $55 to cancel the day before your upgrade was available. So, if I've got some, some math in front of me here, so bear with me. So let's say, for argument's sake, that you've got a full early, early termination fee. You have to pay $175. So the difference between the unsubsidized iPhone and paying full price would be $125. So let's do the math here. $125 plus $199 for what would be a new contract for the 16 gigabyte iPhone equals $324, which is actually $175 savings over the $499 that you'd have to pay. For the 32 gig, it's $125 savings again, plus the $299 gives you the same, well, $100 more savings of $424, or sorry, total of 424, and still the same savings of 175. So I just want to explain the math to you. So technically, you would be saving money, but you might not be eligible to start a new contract. You're going to if you, even if you are, you might have a lapse, and it's going to be very difficult to start a new contract. So I'm not advocating going out and terminating your contract. I'm just explaining it to you since I've been getting a lot of questions about contract termination. So I hope that made sense. Essentially, if you could, in a perfect world, Terminate your contract and start a new one the same day, you would save 175 bucks over the iPhone 3G upgrade price of 499 or 599. That being said, it's not worth it. If you want an iPhone 3G, it's probably better, unfortunately, to pay the full unsubsidized price of 500 or 600 bucks, uh, respectively. I know it is a lot to swallow. From a consumer perspective, like I said in previous videos, I understand the outcry. Apple gave you a discount on 3G and you want that same discount for the 3GS. But from a business standpoint, you just can't do it. And you have to understand it just a little bit. You don't expect a discount on everything you get. And if you take the 3G out of the equation, you can't expect a phone, com phone company to give you a discount every time you want to upgrade. It's the nature of the beast that new technology comes out. There's going to be an update to the iPhone 3GS in probably a year. It's going to be an update after that and after that and after that. And unfortunately, if you want to be on the cutting edge of technology, it's going to cost you money. And people get a little sensitive when it comes to their wallets. So I, I can get the consumer outcry, but from a business standpoint, it's just not smart business sense. I know it's probably going to piss a lot of people off, but it's the truth. I know you there's a lot of emotion involved with getting a new phone because you love the iPhone or you feel strongly about Apple. But from a business standpoint, at and just can't do it. It doesn't affect Apple one way or another, whether or not... AT&T subsidizes it, they, get a, they would get a price um, of a lump check back from, from AT&T. You know what Apple could do is make the phone a little bit cheaper uh, component-wise. It hasn't been torn down yet, but I assume there's a big profit margin built in. But that profit margin doesn't account for all the R&D, and that's research and development that went into the iPhone. So this is a little more technical and math I didn't like to get in my videos, but I did want to explain the pricing and how it worked and the reasoning behind why AT&T is doing it. I'd be a little upset too, again I understand it, from, but from a business standpoint it just does not make sense for another subsidy for the 3GS. And that would mean they'd, the next phone would be subsidized and after that would be subsidized. And it really would get to be a very long and uh, negative process for the carrier. And this would be true if the iPhone was on any other carrier, if it was on Verizon, Sprint, or T-Mobile, the carrier just could not afford to subsidize every device every year. So anyway, I hope this helped answer some of your questions. For exclusive content, and you want to ask me some more iPhone-related questions, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash john4lakers. Link will be in the sidebar. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.